Sunday morning, 24 hours, seven days a week after this dunya. To your target is dunya, and remember there is another hunter. That hunter is death. Is always chasing you. From the beginning that you come, from the moment that you come to this world, you start to have this time is decreasing and decreasing. Starting from 200,000 hours and goes to less and less and less until reaches to one or two minutes and zero minutes. So there is someone is chasing you. Something is chasing you while you are chasing dunya. But remember, sometimes we hit our targets and sometimes we miss our targets. We chase the dunya, sometimes we have it, and sometimes, no, we cannot have it. But does the death miss his targets? Have you ever heard somebody who have missed the target of death? There is a beautiful anecdote, they say, about Prophet Sulaiman. One day he was sitting in his courtyard, and one of his companions was sitting with him. All of a sudden, the companion looked at strange man entering this courtyard. He felt so scared. He told Sulaiman salam, Ya Nabi Allah, I am scared of this person. I cannot have him. Can you do something to transfer me somewhere else? He said, no problem. This is death of, this is angel of death. Malakul maut. He said, please take me away. I can't see him. Where do you want to go? Where do you want to travel? India. So Prophet Sulaiman buy him a ticket and send him to India in a blink of an eye. The guy is there, Malakul Maut comes and says salam to Sulaiman salam, and tell him, Ya Nabi Allah, I am, you know, I'm baffled. I came to take the soul of this guy, but it is not here, it's in India. What is this guy doing here with you? He said, well, I sent him to your destination. Malik al Mot went to India and took his soul. So sometimes we run away from death. But have you seen one moment, one incident that death has missed his target? Never. So here the Imam is telling his companion, do not chase this life so much. Do not be so obsessed with this life. This life eventually will trick you. You have two options. Either sell yourself to this dunya and leave it or buy yourself and save and preserve yourself. That's what Amir al-Mu'mineen salam says, الدُّنْيَا دَارُ مَمَرُ وَلَا دَارُ مَقَرُ وَالنَّاسُ فِيهَا رَجُلًا رَجُلٌ بَاعَ نَفْسَهُ فَأَوْبَقَهَا وَرَجُلٌ اِبْتَاعَ نَفْسَهُ فَأَعْتَقَهَا There are two people. One who sells himself, enslaves himself to dunya. He's a free, Allah has created him as a free. He's a good person, a rich person, a king, yet he enslaves himself to a dunya. While you see someone else, he's a slave, but he never cares about dunya. That's what happened with Yusuf He was a slave. But the dunya came to him, and he turned his way. He turned away from dunya. That's why he reached the kingdom. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has rewarded him with. If you turn away from dunya, dunya will come to you. But if you keep chasing dunya, dunya will run away from you. That's the hadith of Imam alayhi salam. And you see many. You see Yusuf in this side, you see on the other side, people that have had everything yet, they got bogged down to this life, to this world. They narrate in Many Israel's history, they say there was a great man, Abid, a worshipper. Everybody would respect him, and he was well known for his supplications and dua. Anyone would want him to do a prayer for him, and his prayer get accepted, would, get, would come to this man. And he was a monk in the monastery, sitting and doing prayers and everything. All of a sudden, one day, the daughter of the prince or the king was sick, she was insane. So her brothers brought her, brought her to this guy, to the monastery, so this guy can pray to Allah, so she would be cured. This guy was in his prayers. He was oblivious of those people. They entered in his court, yet he was, you know, he was 
praying to Allah who is not really paying attention to them. At that time they said, okay, let's leave this girl, we come back again. And, you know, at that time he will ask Allah, she will be fine, we will take her back home. Right when they left, the shaitan came and told him, look at her, look at how beautiful she is. And kept whispering and whispering and whispering until this man cut off, cut off his prayers and did the indecent thing with this woman. But the shaitan did not leave him, still stayed with him. After he finished, he told him, you know what happened? Now she got the pregnant. You got to take care of this problem. The brothers will come and find out. They will kill you. What should I do? Kill her. Kill her and bury her. Nobody knows about that. And you say, and you say that I haven't, seen any, I haven't seen anything. I was in the middle of my prayers. So he grabs the knife and kills the lady. Once he kills her, the brothers come. They see him that he is in his crime. They take him, they bring him to the court, and afterward they execute him. While he's, you know, they, he's taken to put the rope in his neck, Shaytan comes back to him and tells him, okay, how are you now? He said, what do you see? You see what happened to me? How am I? He said, okay, you want me to save you? He said, of course, I want you to save me. Look, you put me in trouble. Now I want you to save me. He said, don't worry. But I want you to prostrate for me. Do a sujda. Consider me, I am your God. He said, how? He said, ah, you know, you are there. Just gesture with your head. And that would be fine. Once he gestured, the rope, you know, they throw him from the rope and he, his neck was cut out and he died. And the ayah came. This is in Tafsir al-Ayah. مثل الشيطان إذ قال للإنسان اكفر فلما كفر قال إني بريء منه إني أخاف الله رب العالمين. Once we do kufr, we follow shaitan. Shaitan says no. You know, I don't like you. You're not a good follower. And he will give up, give his, himself up against us. So this is what the Imam alayhi salam says. That you chase dunya. But dunya... Remember, there is something else is chasing with you. And this dunya will trick everyone else. One day, Isa, Jesus Christ, see dunya in the face, in the, in, in, in the shape of an old lady with big spikes and nails. He tell her, how many husbands you had? She said, countless, many. How many did you divorce? She said, I did not divorce any of them. I have killed them all. Whoever came and married with me, eventually I killed him. Because once he gets in, he doesn't want to leave until I have to kill him. So, that's what the Imam alayhi salam said. Then, he says, وَعْلَمْ إِنَّ فِي حَلَالِهَا حِسَابًا وَفِي حَرَامِهَا عِقَابٌ وَبِالشُّبُحَاتِ عِتَابٌ Meaning that whatever you do, it will be accounted for. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will write it down. You will have a big file tomorrow. Whatever فَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرًا يَرَهُ وَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ شَرًا يَرَهُ Therefore be careful. If you do something lawful, there is a hisab for you. There is an accountant who will write down. 